Today we're diving deep into the world of One Piece. You ready? This time around, we've got something super interesting to talk about. Shanks' past is intense. Was Shanks ever weak? Why did Shanks become one of the four emperors? We're gonna chat about all this and more, so stick around till the end. Shanks is one of the most vital characters since episode one. He might even carry more importance than the Straw at Pirates, believe it or not. 12 years ago, he saved Luffy's life, sacrificing his arm in the process, and left him his treasured straw hat. Turns out, it was Shanks who gave Luffy the gum gum fruit too. So, how strong was Shanks back then? He had a slip up when a mountain bandit named Higuma, who had a bounty of 8 million berries and 56 kills to his name, managed to escape. This led to rumors like, was Higuma actually really strong? Or was he secretly the 56 Emperor killer? Well, it's more likely that Shanks just let his guard down. He did settle the score using just one arm, remember? By the way, Shanks had a bounty of 1.04 billion berries 12 years ago. This amount is almost equal to Tode's Katakori and Sanji's bounty, excluding inflation. It is also less than King Hancock, Marco, and Zoro's bounty. When comparing bounties like this, we can see that Shanks was indeed strong but not overwhelmingly so. Now, the bounty doesn't exactly equal strength, but it should be close. I'm guessing Shanks back then might not have been on the same level as Kaido and Big Mom. Why? Because Kaido and Big Mom were in their 40s and 50s, probably in their prime 12 years ago. The power gap might have been similar to the one between Zoro and Kaido in the Battle of Onigashima. Yet, in just six years, Shanks managed to climb his way up to become one of the four emperors. He stood shoulder to shoulder with Kaido and Big Mom all within a decade. Shanks even got to a point where Kaido acknowledged him as an equal. That's a huge leap, wouldn't you agree? What on earth happened to Shanks in those six years? Three names headline the movie Film Red. It's all about Luffy, Uta, and Shanks. We all know Shanks has been globally popular from the get-go, but Film Red is likely the first instance we truly dig deep into his character. But it's not just his character that's given a deep dive. His strength, mind-blowing and exceeding all expectations, was revealed too. While his character portrayal was pretty much as expected, his strength had many fans pleasantly surprised and expectations shattered. Why, you ask? Because Shanks had been often rumored not to be that strong. Some even speculated him to be the weakest among the four emperors. It's the episode from way back in episode 1 where he was outwitted by Higuma and lost an arm to a sea king. Even after 25 years, that event was still casting a big shadow on fans' perception of him. However, the portrayal of Shanks in Film Red and his handling of the Ryokugyu incident, which was shown in the original just before the movie's release, overturned all those preconceptions in an instant. Now, you wouldn't find a single soul online claiming Shanks is the weakest of the four emperors. On the contrary, all you see now are praises for Shanks, calling him the strongest in the world or the man closest to becoming the Pirate King. In short, we all, including me, did a magnificent flip-flop. Now let's circle back to the question, how did Shanks become one of the four emperors in just six years? Could it be that he had connections with the celestial dragons? But becoming strong isn't just about connections, so the figurehead stuff probably has nothing to do with it. Another important point is that he became an emperor after losing an arm. Whether he became stronger because he lost an arm, or would he have been even stronger if he had both? That's a tough call to make. But even if the opponent were Kaido, having one arm doesn't seem to be a handicap at all. Mihawk once remarked something like, it's pointless to fight with you now that you're one-armed. But chances are he was probably thinking, if we fought seriously, I might lose. However, he didn't feel like fighting at the moment, so he phrased it like that. So what did one-armed Shanks do to become one of the four emperors? Ever wondered who the four emperors were before Shanks made the cut? The only sure shot name we have is Whitebeard. I'd wager Kaido and Big Mom were already seated at the big table too. So, who's the missing piece in this jigsaw? That's the million berry question, isn't it? We might guess Shanks had to defeat this mystery fourth to claim his spot. So, who the heck was it? Among the big names we've seen so far, potential Emperor level pirates could be Shiki, Uchoku, Ginbu, and Captain John. But let's rule out Shiki, he's a no-go. It must have been either Uchoku, Genbu, or John. Now we've seen Captain John as a zombie soldier, no less, on Thriller Bark. 
As for Uchiyoku, we found out recently he's been ruling the roost in Hachi no Su. So who's left? The only guy without an episode to his name, Igin Bu. Perhaps he was one of the original emperors and Shanks took him down to nab his spot. What do you think? I've introduced some theories on the enigma that is about Shanks today. As Shanks' importance grows, we can't afford to look away for a second. Can we now? This channel posts summaries, explanations, and ranking videos related to One Piece. If you like One Piece, we would be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching till the end. See you in the next video.